Thank you all for coming this morning. If you were coming from the West, you probably had to be your own Iron Man in terms of patience, maybe. But thank you in any event. Two points today, but don't feel that you're getting shortchanged. It's very important that we reflect together on fraternal correction, which is what the first and the third reading are about. The way we correct one another as brothers and sisters, not in arrogance or not with contempt, but with love. Fraternal correction in the church is a service of love. Now, nobody today ever wants to correct anybody because you have your own truth and I have my own truth and we just peacefully coexist and it's all just wonderful. Except, of course, it's not. It's a confusing Politically incorrect to correct anyone for anything. You even have to be careful, lest you say that ISIS are Islamic terrorists. That's obviously true, but some can't say that because, after all, we don't see the world the way ISIS does. They have their own truth. So we have to be polite when we deal with them. Just the way they're polite when they're beheading people. So it's politically incorrect to correct. And that's the problem. In the first reading, the prophet is talking to the leaders in the faith. That is, if it were today, he'd be talking to the priests and the bishops. And he's saying to the priests and bishops, if something out there is wrong, you better correct the people. Because if you don't correct them, you will be responsible for their misdeeds. But it's very politically incorrect to correct anyone. So, what happens with many priests and even bishops? They're pressured, sometimes intimidated, to seek in a way which is politically correct. And then, if something needs to be corrected, no one says it's all right, but there's just silence. First reading says, if you're silent when somebody needs to be corrected, you're responsible for the harm they do. That's supposed to scare bishops and priests. I'm scared, and so I'm politically incorrect. Because certain things have to be corrected. Catholics in general have to correct one another with regard to many things. Catholic bishops and priests have to correct people with regard to artificial contraception, with regard to abortion, with regard to same-sex unions, with regard to euthanasia. A lot of our elderly are being put to sleep. There are different kinds of subtle euthanasia going on and nobody knows it because there's a conspiracy of silence. 
we have to seek out about those things, and bishops and priests should galvanize us, encourage us, inspire us to seek out. So in a nice way, we have to insist that our pastors, our priests and bishops, seek out. And we have to give them the example of seeking out. Because, as the first reading says, evil must be corrected. And if someone doesn't seek out that someone is responsible for the evil. That's clear and that's the first point. The second point is the tough one. The second reading reminds us again of the centrality of love, of loving respect. Those who are going to correct someone else, including the priests and the bishops, must correct with love. And sometimes when bishops or priests don't correct, it's because they don't know how to do it and still come off lovingly. And a lot of times people won't let anyone correct them with love. No matter how someone corrects, the other will take it as hatred, as in correction regarding same-sex unions. The minute you say that, you're a hater, even if you're trying to do it with love. And so some people, some priests, some bishops, are silent rather than be publicly accused of hate. And that makes some sense. So it has to be done with love, but what does that mean? Does it mean with a nice tone of voice? Does that force someone not to call us a hater? No. It has to be done with love. What does that mean? Pope Francis this morning spelled it out, I thought, brilliantly. He said, how do you correct with love? You make sure that when you're correcting somebody, you are also saying, I too am a sinner. I'm a sinner too. I don't have everything perfectly in order myself. I'm a sinner, you're a sinner. And then we say, secondly, thank God that he has granted me mercy. And then we also say, thank God that he will grant you mercy if you turn away from me. I'm a sinner, I'm humbled, and God is merciful. That applies to me and I need it because I'm a sinner too. But that also applies to you. Now again, a big if. If people are reasonable, they will take that proclamation as one of love. But in today's highly divided and politically charged situation, who knows whether somebody will be reasonable. But we got to correct. We got to correct clearly. We got to correct with great conviction. There should be no doubt about that. All of us. But at the same time as we correct, we got to realize, and the other person has to realize, I'm a sinner. I'm no better than you are. I just sin in different ways, maybe but I'm a sinner, and I need mercy. Thank God he is rich in mercy. You need mercy too. Thank God he is as rich in mercy toward you as he is toward me. 
Pope Francis thinks that that's the secret to correcting with love. And I'm always happy when I agree wholeheartedly with the Pope. Praise be Jesus Christ.